Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemistry CC for you. So today we are going to discuss Kerala University MSc Chemistry questions. I'm really sorry that I couldn't upload the JNU uh, question paper on time. It was because I was not feeling well and I couldn't upload that. Um, now let's move on and I'll do all the other videos that have promised the day before. Let's begin. So this is the part one of Kerala University MSc Chemistry questions. I'll try to do one or two more parts before your exam on Monday. Uh, according to how many people really wants the part. Let's begin. First question today is from the part of polymer. Bakelite is obtained from phenol by reacting with. So the answer here is HCHO or uh, it is called the formaldehyde. So bakelite is a polymer which is uh, obtained from the reaction of phenol with formaldehyde and it is a step growth branched thermosetting copolymer of phenol and formaldehyde. This is very important. In polymers, usually they also ask what are thermoplastic, thermosetting plastics, and uh, all the information regarding the same. So we have covered this part in multiple videos. I'll give the link in the description box below. You can go watch that for uh, more information. It is going to help you. And also please watch the polymer part that we have done a video previously, some a few days back. Uh, it is also going to help you in the examination. And before I continue, uh, I have seen that in Kerala University, you have a few descriptive type questions also. We'll figure out how to help you regarding that part. But right now, let's go with the MCQs here. Next, it is the nitration of chloroform gives. So you have picric acid, chloropicrin, isocyanide, and acetaldehyde. So the answer is that the hydrogen of chloroform is replaced by the nitro group. And... Uh, the product is chloropicrin uh, or it is also called as trichloronitritomethane or nitrochloroform. So these are the different names. Uh, so answer B, option B, chloropicrin is the answer and it is also called as trichloronitritomethane or nitrochloroform. Now let's take a uh, look at its property. It is a liquid poisonous gas. It is a liquid, it is poisonous and it is used as an insecticide and a war gas. So nitration of chloroform gives chloropicrin, which is also called as trichloronitritomethane or nitrochloroform, which is poisonous and used in insecticide and as a war gas. Now let's take a look at the, um, the structure. So this is, you can see, as you can see here, uh, actually it is CHCl3. In this carbon, there is one hydrogen. This hydrogen is replaced by nitro group and therefore you have trichloronitritomethane or the chloropicrin. So this is the structure of the uh, compound now let's go move, go forward when a beam of light of sufficiently high frequency is allowed to strike a metal surface in vacuum electrons rejected from the metal surface so this phenomenon is called as photoelectric effect let's take a look at the equations of photoelectric effect so h nu is equal to phi zero plus half mv max square so here h nu is the frequency of the uh, h nu is the energy of the incoming light and nu is the frequency of the incoming light or the uh, radiation and h nu zero nu zero is the frequency which is required to eject the electrons from the metal surface and this h2 together is known as uh, work function phi zero and nu zero is also called threshold frequency and what happens is there will be a lot of energy in the uh, incoming radiation some of which is uh, some of it is used to uh, eject the electrons out to reap but the electrons some and uh, a part of this energy will be becoming the kinetic energy of the electron so what happens the light comes the electrons are ejected on ejecting to eject it requires some amount of frequency which is the uh, threshold frequency and together the energy is called the work function once uh, Apart from the work function, the remaining energy will be converted into the kinetic energy of the electron which is ejected. So that is the half mv max square. So this is the equation that you have to remember from the part of photoelectric effect. Now let's move forward. The carbon atoms in alkyne are, so the carbon atoms in alkyne are sp hybridized. So in triple bond it is sp hybridized and for alkanes, uh, so alkanes, let's, it is sp3 and alkenes, it is sp2 hybridized. So please remember this, the hybridization in alkyne is sp, uh, alkenes is sp2 
and alkanes is sp3 so these are the hybridizations of various hydrocarbons next question which of the following structures are aromatic so you have four structures here so before that you need to know the huckel's rule which defines the aromaticity so an aromatic compound is planar cyclic planar and cyclic with conjugated double bond and should have 4n plus 2 pi electrons and what should be the value of n n can be anything from 0 1 2 etc and if it is anti aromatic if it is planar cyclic conjugated double bonds with 4 and pi electrons but here there is a catch n starts from 1 0 is not present so now we will take a look at each of this so here this is a planar ring and uh, this lone pair one of the lone pair of oxygen is contributed towards the ring so in total you have 2 4 and 6 pi electrons so 6 pi electrons means 4 into 1 1 plus 2 pi electrons so it is 4 and plus 2 pi electrons so 1 is aromatic okay now this is this cannot be considered as a conjugated double bond because it is missing here and this is an exocyclic double bond it will not be considered now the third here you have 2 4 6 pi electrons again 4 and plus 2 pi electrons so 3 is also aromatic so the confusion that you would have is why we are not considering this lone pair so the thing is this lone pair is not contributed inside the ring even in the first case which is furan this is furan uh, only it has two sets of lone pairs but only one lone pair is contributed inside the ring the other remains outside similar is the case of the third one or pyridine here also the nitrogen uh, the lone pair on the nitrogen is not contributed towards the uh, to, to the inside of the ring here now the last one this has 2, 4, 6 and 8 pi electrons which comes in the anti-aromatic part which is 4 into 2 pi electrons or 4 and pi electrons. So that is anti-aromatic. So the answer would be 1 and 3. So this should be actually 3. Let's maybe they had some spelling uh, the typos in the question paper. So option C is the correct answer. The structures which are aromatic are 1 and 3. So whenever you have this aromatic city question, you have to look whether they are planar, cyclic, conjugated, double ones and whether they have 4n plus 2 pi electrons or 4n pi electrons. If these are not planar and if, without being planar, if they have 4n plus 2 pi electrons or 4n pi electrons, we would not consider them as aromatic or anti-aromatic. They will be non-aromatic compounds. Please be specific. These, all these conditions should be satisfied to become uh, aromatic. Now let's go to the next question. The statement of Calder's law is, this is a very important question. So, uh, the equivalent conductance of an electrolyte at infinite dilution is equal to the sum of equivalent conductance of component ions. Option A is the correct answer. It is not the difference. It is not the difference or the product of the component ions. It is the sum of the component ions. So, let's assume we have a very, sorry, we have a very uh, strong electrolyte. Let's um, call it as AX. So, this is A plus and X minus are the component ions. So, we can give the equivalent conductance of the electrolyte as a whole, which is the lambda 0 AX can be written as, it is, it can be written as lambda A plus plus lambda X minus. So, this will be the answer for uh, the total. So, this should be we, you should write like this. So, if you have HCl at infinite dilution, we can write the, uh, the equivalent conductance of HCl as the uh, sum of the equivalent conductance of H plus plus Cl minus. Very important question. The numericals are always asked from this part. So, please take care and remember this particular uh, law. Next question is a direct question. Most abundant rare gas in the atmosphere is it is argon. So, all these are rare gases. But the most abundant in the atmosphere is argon. Next question: Which of the following molecule does not obey the 18 electron rule? So, in such in these cases, what you have to do is first step will be to identify the valence electrons of the central metal atom, total number of valence electrons of the central metal atom, and the contribution of electrons of each of the ligands. Let's take a look at it. So, manganese. It has a configuration of 3d5, electronic configuration of 3d5. 
4s2. So the total number of valence electrons will be the sum of s and the d electron, which is 7. Then each of the carbonyl group, in, uh, irrespective of the central metal atom, the, the ligand carbon monoxide, the carbonyl uh, ligand gives two electrons each. The methyl ligand gives Me gives one electron and also Fe. Fe has an electronic configuration of 3d6, 4s2. So the total number of electrons is also equal to 8. So Fe gives 8 electrons and chlorine gives one electron. CR has an electronic configuration of 3d5, 4s1. In order to make it half filled, we make it 3d5, 4s1. So it is contributing 6 electrons. Now we will take a look at the sum of electrons in each of the complexes. So in A, you have M and CO5, M. So we have 7 from manganese, 5 into 2, 10 from carbonyl, and 1 Me contributes 1. So you have a total of 18 electrons there. So this is not the answer we want. In the second case, you have 8 from uh, iron and 5 into 2, 10 from carbon carbonyl group. So it is 18 again. This is also not the answer we want. In the third, you have uh, chromium giving 6 electrons, 10 electrons, 10 electrons from the uh, carbon monoxide, uh, the carbonyl group, and you have a minus 2 charge. So you should add those two electrons because there is an excess of charge here. So if it was plus 2, then you will minus 2 electrons. But here, since it is minus 2, you have to add 2 electrons. So this is also giving 18 electrons. So this is also not the answer. So definitely our answer would be the option D. Now let's take a look at that. No, the manganese is uh, giving 7 electrons, uh, carbon monoxide is giving you 8 electrons which sums up to 15, then each of the chlorine gives 1 each to make up 2, so 8 plus 2, 10, plus 7, 17. So the option D, M and CO4, Cl2 does not obey the 18 electron rule. So in 18 electron rule, the total number of electrons in the complex should be 18. That is the answer. So option D is the answer we require. Next question. Which of the following amino acids is not chiral? So glycine is the answer. So glycine is the only amino acid with no asymmetric or chiral carbon because it has two hydrogens attached to the car, uh, alpha carbon. So if you um, if you know uh, actually the any all the amino acids will be uh, can be written like this N C alpha C prime. So C prime will be having a C O group and this will be some kind of N H group so this kind of groups will be the nh3 plus then c alpha co minus this will be the uh, basic structure of an amino acid so in the c alpha it has two hydrogens in case of glycine in all the other cases there will be other uh, groups attached to the alpha carbon therefore it will be uh, asymmetric carbon or it will be chiral but only in glycine it is not chiral so the answer is option A, glycine. So these are the questions that we are going to discuss today. I'll do the part 2 very soon. And also the part 2 of Know Your Branches is uh, going to be uploaded tomorrow. Please watch that. It will get, help you to make a good choice regarding your um, regarding the branch you should opt for your MSc Chemistry. So thank you so much. And the job video is also going to be uploaded very soon. Uh, if you have not subscribed the channel yet, please subscribe the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest notification. Please check out all our playlists for all the videos you require. We have sorted them out into lectures, question answers and entrance examinations. We have sorted them out really well. You, you could go and check our playlist for any other information. We have begun a Telegram channel. If you want any assistance, you can please join the Telegram channel. And we are beginning an Instagram page where you can message us directly. So do that as well. Thank you so much. Have a good day everyone. Prepare really well.